Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on. Assalamu alaikum Imam Saab. Thank you very much for taking some time out today. I know it is quite kind of uh, hectic with all the news going on. How are you today, Imam Saab? Gee, bihamdillah ta'ala, ala ka fazl karam, all well and good with your du'a, Azrahid bhai. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Imam Saab, uh, MashaAllah, you are a well-known speaker up and down the country. But just in case we've got some people listening in who don't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about your Islamic studies? At what age did you pursue Islamic education and where? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabijina wa Shafiina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa Barik wa Sallim wa Salli alayhi. In relation to my studies, I began uh, my journey of seeking knowledge at the age of 16 okay. uh, under the guidance and tutelage of my Sheikh Tariqat, Qibla uh, Mufti Qazi Hassan Raza Sahib here in Bradford. MashaAllah. Um, I initially started uh, some classes with them uh, in the early stages of Sarf and Nahav and Dars and Izami, okay. uh, as well as spending a lot of time in their company and Sohbat uh, and working on my uh, self-development and character Mashallah. and um, personality, so to speak. Uh, but my official study started at the age of 21 okay. uh, when I joined uh, Jamia Al-Karam, okay. uh, the renowned and uh, well-recognized and acclaimed okay. uh, Madrasa and Dar al Okay. in Redford in Nottinghamshire and I spent uh, four and a half years there. Okay. Um, during that time I serve as uh, Imam and Khatib of uh, two masajids in East London for 18 months or so. Okay. Uh, Masjid Awasya Karni uh, in Ilford and Jamia Masjid Ghosia uh, okay. Lee Bridge Road in Walthamstow. Okay. And then I left Jamia Al Karam in January 2015, okay. and then we were able to purchase uh, Al Hikam Institute here in Bradford in February mm. 2015. Okay. And then the following month, I started as Imam and Khatib at Makkah Masjid in Bolton. Okay. I stayed there for around three and a half years, okay. uh, serving the community and the people of Bolton, okay. uh, as well as overseeing the um, development and the early stages uh, of Al Hikam Institute, okay. uh, managing the madrasa, right. uh, and obviously leading the prayers uh, at the uh, masjid. And mm. recently, uh, in August 2019, I have been serving as Imam and Khatib of the Greengate Jami Masjid. Okay. in Oldham, Oldham. Uh, as well as continue my duties and responsibilities here okay. at Al Hikam Institute. Okay. I also teach at the Greengate Islamic College as well, uh, which is a part of the Greengate Jami Masjid. Right. Um, so this is a, a brief overview okay. of my uh, background studies okay. and my khidmat over the last 10 years or so. MashaAllah, that's a very extensive uh a list of where you've worked, mashallah. You've covered quite a lot of ground in that period. Yeah. <laughs> mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Uh, mashallah. By the grace of Allah Almighty and through the Karam Nawazi of Rasul Akram, I don't think there is a, a town or city where this fakir hasn't done a bayan. <laughs> mashallah, uh, mashallah. From as far north as Dundee in Scotland mashallah. to down south uh, in Southampton, yeah, where mashallah. I've been several times. I think I'm pretty much covered. Every major town and city, mm. um, uh, with the exception of maybe one or two. G, G. Uh, but uh, Alhamdulillah, be many, many, many times I've been to Blackburn, G. Uh, Lancaster Place Masjid, uh, recently Oak Street, uh, Medina Masjid. Mm -hmm. um, I worked very closely with the Muhaddis Azam mission there um, and the Sultan Bahu uh, Center as well. Yep. So, yep. Alhamdulillah. Uh, this line of work has led mm -hmm. uh, me to do a lot of khidmat mm -hmm. for the deen mm -hmm. uh, with the intention of um, keeping myself uh, on the straight mm -hmm. path and guiding many mm -hmm. others uh, mm -hmm. with this intention that we all remain 
steadfast upon our deed. Oh, I mean, mashallah. And Imam Sab, you've mentioned uh, that you obviously you've done uh, various talks up and down the country. You started your uh, actual studies, you mentioned, at 21. How did how did you get into this field? How did you pursue the uh, pursue the Islamic studies? Was it like parental? Was it family? How how did you come along this path into the, studying? The biggest the influence, uh, the biggest influence uh, upon myself and my brothers uh, is no doubt my mother. Mashallah. Uh, my mother was the one who uh, inspired us, uh, encouraged us, um, supported us. In every aspect, whether that was financially, yeah. uh, whether that was in terms of uh, giving nasiha and guidance, Mashallah. making du'as like every mother does for Mashallah. their son or their for their daughter, uh, so she was the uh, the first um, uh, trigger, so to speak, and okay. the first main um, purpose of inspiration. Um, and then after that, like I said, from a young age, I was blessed yeah. to be in the company of. Qibla uh, Mufti Qazi Hassan Raza Sahib, who are very um, um, sincere in the work that they do here in Bradford. Deep. At that time, they were at the Jamit Masjid Hanfia on Kailai's Road, and I sat at the Gaf at the young age of uh, 15 uh, through the uh, intervention of my Nana Jan. And uh, that was then the start of my affiliation with Mufti Saab. Uh, I got. Uh, uh, that with them at the age of 16 Six. and uh, they were uh, then the catalyst to inspiring me to study further mm. and supporting me uh, i did my first public bian at the age of 17 uh, if not before then uh, during the days of 80 calf in that masjid that i've just mentioned and uh, like i said i started the basics of sarf and uh, uh, with them, but because I was also working at the time, studying as well, yeah. there were a lot of distractions. Okay. And then one day I asked them for their sincere advice. Uh, my brother Imam Asim had already completed his three years at Jamia Al Karam, and uh, I had a desire uh, to join Jamia Al Karam well before him. Uh, but our financial um, uh, status didn't allow two of us to study at one time okay. so whilst he was studying uh, I supported the family Deep. and then he returned the favour that whilst I was stu studying he Mashallah. then supported the family Deep. Deep. so I uh, can't forget my father as well uh, he played a huge role in this um, you know uh, paying our fees mm. uh, picking us up dropping us off to the madrasa uh, you know encouraging us supporting us uh, certainly when we were uh, blessed to purchase Al Hikam Institute my okay. father, my mother, without hesitation, uh, they were the first uh, individuals to support us financially. And from their life savings, they gave us £70,000. So a huge, huge uh, support from my mother Masha. and my father. Uh, my father obviously recently passed away. Oh, Allah Almighty raised his darajat in the akhirah and grant him the highest maqam in Jannatul Firdaus. Uh, so parents, uh, Sheikh Tariqat, and then obviously the Asatiza, the teachers at Jami Al Karam, they played their part as well, okay. uh, giving us the understanding of our deen. Uh, okay. And uh, obviously from amongst them, uh, Honorable Qibla, uh, Mufassir Quran, Shari Bukhari, Hazrat Allama Muhammad Imdad Hussein Pirzada, so, Hafizah Allah uh, Ta'ala, they were no doubt a huge okay. influence on uh, them early days okay. uh, in okay. Jami Al Karam. And throughout, uh, throughout our time there, but uh, uh, yes, uh, mother, Sheikh Tariqat and teachers. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, that is quite extensive and you mentioned the importance, uh, the impact your parents had. So um, that is a very key point. If we want to raise a generation of scholars, then the parents need to, you know, guide their children in that particular path. Uh, so I, can, I, can, uh, I do believe that is parents is where it all starts from. Would you agree with that? Definitely. Uh, you know, uh, the parents are the first. Certainly the mother, uh, she is the first madrasa uh, for the child, her laps. And what she um, what she invests in the child, mm -hmm. how she nurtures the children, uh, mm -hmm. will no doubt have a huge influence 
on what path they will take. Uh, you know, we've got numerous and countless examples of this uh, from uh, the uh, history of Islam. Ittifaq and today, uh, because of the current situation, mm-hmm. I'm going to be starting a um, daily dars from Al Adab Al Mufrad right. of Imam Muhammad bin Ismail Al Bukhari. And just one example of the um, the great role and the great uh, uh, part that the mother and the father play okay. uh, in the upbringing of the child. Uh, you may not know, or you may know, yeah. that Imam Bukhari was born blind. No, I did not know that. Imam Bukhari was born blind. Okay. Uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani mentioned this in the Shara of Sahih Bukhari, Fathul Bari. And uh, the mother of Imam Bukhari, she would constantly make du'as to Allah Almighty that, Oh Allah, restore the uh, eyesight of my son. Mm-hmm. And every night she would make this du'a and go to sleep. Uh, the following morning she would wake up, uh, but her du'a hadn't been answered. Mm-hmm. But one night she had a dream, and in that dream she saw the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Khalidullah. And Ibrahim alayhi salam said that, Oh, mother of Imam Bukhari, uh, at that time obviously, he wasn't the great Imam Bukhari, this was in his infancy. Uh, oh, mother of Muhammad bin Ismail, uh, your dua has been accepted by Allah. Wake up in the morning and your uh, son's eyesight will have been restored. And that's exactly what happened. She woke up in the morning and her son's eyesight had been restored. And no doubt uh, from amongst those whose du'as are accepted by Allah Almighty, one of them individuals is the mother. Like the Prophet Wasallam said, uh, the dua of a mother is never rejected. The dua of a musafir is never rejected. The dua of a mazloom, that person who is oppressed, mm-hmm. is never rejected. The dua of a sahim, a faster, is never rejected, so on and so forth. Mashallah. So Mashallah. this is the great role that a mother plays, Mashallah. that maybe she's not able to be the means of gaining knowledge yeah. uh, for the son in the sense that she's not the one who teaches uh, the son or the daughter the yeah. gardans and the Arabic grammar and so on. Yeah. But she has a huge part to play in, in the mindset of the child that uh, is formed and the mentality that is created. Yeah. And, um, you know, like the mother of Imam Malik bin Anas, yeah. every day she would, uh, before sending her son out to go and study the deen, uh, she would tie the Imam Sharif on the head of her son. Mashallah. And she played a huge part in uh, molding and influencing and motivating her son. Mashallah. So we find numerous and countless examples like this throughout the history of Islam. Yeah. And we need our mothers of today yeah. uh, and the fathers of today to play a similar role. Definitely. And that if you have three, four, five children, uh, yeah. sons and daughters, that you select and nominate one of them and not the one who has the least intellectual capacity mm-hmm. or the one who you think is going to fail his GCSEs yeah. or her A-levels, yeah. but rather the one who is intellectual yeah. and influential and encourage them to become either a hafiz of the Qur'an yeah. or an alim or alima of the deen. And no doubt this is a sole investment in the dunya and more importantly in the akhirah as well. So Imam Sab, thank you very much for that. Um, moving forward swiftly to the current uh, issues that we're facing. No doubt you've probably had your phone going off and messages coming in left, right and centre. Um, I know yesterday night the country, uh, there's a lockdown in place now. But prior to that, maybe the last couple of weeks, uh, you've had Imams up and down the country have had quite a tough time coming to a decision in regards to Jumma and the daily prayers. How, how did you how, how did you guys uh, deal with this prior to the lockdown? Did you? You're definitely right. It was a, a very difficult decision for us to make yeah. uh, from the outset of this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, at, uh, at the early stages, back in uh, certainly when it became uh, global news yeah. uh, at the beginning of this month. Uh, March 2020, um, we were having discussions between ourselves and also in my capacity as the Imam al-Khatib of uh, the Greengate Jami Masjid in Oldham. I was having discussions with the committee there as well. Mm. And initially we were just playing it, um, uh, you know, going along with things as uh, as they were developing Mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis. Uh, Certainly in early March, there was no discussion um, and we didn't even comprehend 
the yeah. possibility of closing the madrasa yeah. or the masjid or no uh, jamaat and no jumaat so on and so yeah. forth and the great you know the uh, great number of activities that we have at yeah. the masjid uh, none of this was discussed but like yeah. i said as things developed uh, and things became known to us and the severity of this virus and illness yeah. uh, became apparent uh, we made decisions uh, quickly, uh, pretty much um, quickly and spontaneously. Mm-hmm. We initially, uh, last uh, Tuesday, decided mm-hmm. that we were going to do a partial closure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I was invited to a meeting at Al Markaz al Islamiyah, mm-hmm. uh, which is headed by our Qibla Mufti Hassan Raza Sab, oh, who I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. And there were a number of doctors there as well, Uh, some of them my peer buys. And uh, they uh, mentioned the severity of the illness, the pandemic, uh, the virus. And it was a real eye-opener. And from there, I advocated that uh, a partial closure is not sufficient. Uh, Rather, a full closure is necessary. And that was exactly what we did the following day after a meeting with the Bradford Council of Mosques uh, where many ulama and masajid committee members were present. Uh, Without any further uh, delay, we uh, closed Al-Hikam Institute as well as the Green Gate Jamit Masjid last Wednesday. uh, Last Wednesday. Uh, And that was, uh, just for the record of those who are listening, uh, the 18th of March. Uh, so the two masjids where, or the two uh, centers where I have yeah. an affiliation and an attachment okay. to, uh, we made that decision yeah. uh, pretty uh, quickly. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we know yesterday, 23rd of March, yeah. uh, the Prime Minister has issued a complete lockdown. Yeah. And that also includes that places of worship yeah. are fully closed. Okay. So I know that there were many masajids, including some in Blackburn as well, yeah. who went with the option of closing the masjid to the public, yeah. but remaining open in the sense that an imam and a few selected members of the community or committee would continue the prayers. Yeah. But now I think it's pretty clear yeah. uh, that the masajids are yeah. fully closed. Yeah. And the reality is, like you said, it's a very difficult decision. Definitely. Nobody envisaged this uh, around a month ago. But it was uh, uh, necessary for us to make this decision because one of the core principles of the Sharia is the preservation of life. Definitely. And with this uh, virus, yeah. uh, the nature of it being such that it can affect people, yeah. uh, so much so that yesterday here in Bradford, a young brother uh, in his uh, early 20s, right. very influential in the Bradford uh, University circles, right. organized a number of Bayanat Brother Fiaz. Okay. Uh, he has been admitted into intensive care. Allah. And he's in ICU at the moment. We make okay. dua for him. Allah Almighty grants him Shifai Kamila, Ajila Nafia. And we're hearing of cases up and down the country yeah. where Muslim brothers and sisters and yeah. non-Muslims alike uh, they are falling ill, they are being mm-hmm. admitted into hospital. Uh, worst case scenario, they are being uh, you know, admitted into ICU. Uh, and this highlights the severity of the situation. Mm-hmm. And just like we don't find a cure to it, and no doubt we believe that for every illness there is a cure. Yeah. Uh, the words of the Prophet so, Salaam, that for every illness, every bamari, every disease there is a cure. But just that there is no cure that is found, it is imperative and absolutely paramount upon each and every one of us that mm. we follow the uh, law of the land. And the government has made it clear uh, that we have to stay at home. We have to self-isolate for the next three weeks. And I encourage each and every person who is currently listening to this podcast uh, mm. that you must play your part. You must play your role and you must be uh, responsible uh, because we know the severity of this situation and this illness is such that if you come into contact with one person uh, and you may not know that you are carrying the virus or the illness, but you might pass that virus and illness to someone else and therefore subsequently they pass it on to another 10 people and yeah. like this it will rapidly spread. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we are uh, obviously going to be held accountable for this. Uh, that We were told to stay at home, we were told to self-isolate, uh, stay away from mass gatherings, so on and so forth, and we didn't adhere to the advice of the government, then we will be held accountable 
for this, uh, no doubt in the dunya, uh, mm-hmm. because we are responsible for putting other people's lives uh, mm-hmm. at risk. Mm-hmm. And then in the akhirah as well, uh, this is also going to be something that Allah Almighty will all the holders to account uh, for as well. Therefore, mm-hmm. it's important that not just the masajids play their roles, yeah. but also the individuals play their role as well. Mm-hmm. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq. Amen. Yeah, thank you very, very much for that, Imam. So when you did mention you had a meeting with the Bradford uh, Council of Mosque yourself and many ulama, and it is very pleasing for myself that, like you said, yesterday the Prime Minister mentioned the lockdown, but prior to the schools being closed, the ulama took action and uh, stopped you know, the uh, Salah in masjids going forward. So that was a very pleasing thing to see that we were very active uh, in making that decision. And in regards to closing the mosque, you mentioned regarding the meeting with Bradford Council of Mosque, where very various ulama were there. Was it unanimously agreed on that the partial closure, closure wouldn't work and we go for the full closure? Uh, there were obviously uh, some who opposed this okay. uh, on the grounds that uh, you know, it, it was when in the evening that the decision was made. Okay. Uh, certainly, Juma was less than 48 hours away. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that chanda or money was the motivation, right. but rather making people aware of it. Yeah. You know, Babi who have been coming, elders mm-hmm. who have been coming to the masjid for decades. You know, yeah. all youngsters are getting emotional and yeah. uh, we're making our comments on social media and passing judgment on, on imams and ulama and committee members. Yeah. But the reality is that these elders yeah. who went through the difficulties of uh, building these masajids, yeah. gathering chanda, yeah. uh, you know, and, and fulfilling phase one, uh, which was establishing these places of worship. Exactly. Uh, they have more right over the masajids than we elders, uh, oh, sorry, exactly. we youngsters do, 100%. right? Uh, but we youngsters seem to be getting more emotional, mm-hmm. uh, especially because of social media yeah. and uh, the, the great role that social media plays now within our lives, yeah. and that every Zed, Bakan and Khalid is in a position to um, think that they've got the power uh, of voicing their opinion when in reality their opinion means nothing. Yeah. And they're not qualified. Yeah. Uh, they're not doctors, nor are they scholars. Amazing. We've had to make these decisions. We've had to pass on this knowledge to others. Uh, therefore, people should know and understand and appreciate their position, their role, uh, and stay within their okat. Uh, mm-hmm. But now things will only get uh, more... Uh, worse, but nevertheless, yeah. uh, it was the elders who had the right yeah. um, to voice their concerns, yeah. uh, and that was what the ulama in that meeting were concerned about. Yeah. But how are we going to inform the elders yeah. uh, that now all of a sudden the masjid is going to close? Yeah. Because you know that 100%. their mindset and the way of thinking and the way exactly. they do things is completely different. Exactly. Uh, you know, for us, it's a case of yeah, yeah, we'll stay at home and you know, catch up on our Netflix and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, binge watch TV shows and whatever it is and surf the internet day and night and the namaz na tama hai gaya, the hai, do sash de mari or sa. Lekin these babbe have this emotional uh, and uh, this great attachment to the masjid, yeah. which we will never understand and appreciate mm-hmm. uh, yeah. as this generation, third and fourth generation Muslim mm-hmm. in this country. So that was the concern among some mm-hmm. scholars. Yeah. Uh, but again, because of the severity of the situation, which was quite eloquently expressed by the doctors who were present in that meeting, and the Muftiani Hazrat who were leading that meeting, including Kibla Mufti Hassan Hazrat yeah. uh, I think the majority, I would say 98% of the masajids, yeah. did take it on board. There were right. a few in Bradford who did do Juma last Friday, yeah. Yeah. but now, uh, as it stands, 24th of uh, March, uh, it's now obviously clear that every single place of worship up and down the country, be that masajids, synagogues, churches, uh, yeah. weddings, functions, gatherings of any sort, except yeah. for funerals from what I've been told yeah. and what we've heard from the, uh, the, the government yesterday, yeah. everything has now uh, yes. come to a, a, a closure yeah. and a standstill. And those scholars who made these decisions before yeah. the government enforced it, uh, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala reward them for their mm-hmm. leadership in this difficult mm-hmm. time. Definitely. Those who weren't able to comprehend it at the time, mm-hmm. uh, they had their own ijtihadi uh, right, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, is perfectly fine within the Sharia. Yeah. We're not saying it's a case of we were right and they were exactly. wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of it, now we're in that situation where uh, today, 24th of March, it's clear that everything uh, is closed. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Imam Saab. And for the listeners out there and various individuals on social media, this isn't a matter of 
his iman is strong and our iman is weak that's why we've closed the masjid no like imam said it's imam sub said it's in regards to life this uh, virus spreading and obviously preserving life as much as they can within their uh, ability like the imam sub is responsible for leading prayers prayers but they're also responsible for the, those coming to the masjid as well so if something is unsafe or they deem anything unsafe they have to make that decision and we as the public should respect the ulama's decision and uh, you know support them rather than giving them a hard time in these tricky uh, in these tough times I mean, like I, I mentioned earlier sorry to interject no problem. if somebody is qualified yeah to object to the decision made by the ulama, meaning yeah. that you have a similar level of education in the deen mm. as those who have made the decision, yeah. then you have every right to raise your objection yeah, to make it razad. Yes. But if you don't even know the fara'id of wudu, yeah. and you don't even know how to do istinja properly, yeah. and then you're questioning the ulama, and we have this uh, pretty much every time uh, yeah. such a situation arises, though, uh, this is quite unprecedented. Yeah. Uh, but similarly, you know, the Eid Masala, like uh, yeah. last year, the year before, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, every person on social media, and this is the danger of social media, yeah. that people think that they have the right to voice their opinions, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, insult ulama, to curse ulama, yeah. when in reality all they're doing is uh, wasting their good deeds. 100%. Getting yes. involved in riba mm. and gossiping and mm. slandering and, and mm. raising accusations against people uh, of knowledge. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, Fas'alu ahla zikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people of zikr, and here the people of zikr meaning the people of knowledge, if you do not know. Yes. yes 100%. And the reality is that we as uh, Amatun Nas, as lay people, those who uh, are uh, Mukallideen of our Imams, we should follow the scholars of our time uh, in the decisions that they make uh, and not always be in a position of doing tanqeed and raising objections and questioning their decisions and thinking that we're better than them or uh, we have more knowledge or we have more greater yeah. attachment to the masjid. Uh, you know, this is not a competition yes. uh, to find out and to determine and establish mm -hmm. who has greater affiliation and attachment to the masjid. Like you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, several times in this interview, that mm -hmm. this is uh, a matter of life and death 100%, 100%. and it's not a decision that was made lightly mm. uh, and it's a, a decision now which has been enforced by the government as well therefore it's important that we uh, respect the decision mm. that the scholars made at the time uh, you know seven eight days ago uh, some even before then and those who at the time uh, decided to make a different decision which still has basis within the Sharia, mm -hmm. then they were right as well. It's not mm -hmm. a case of us yeah. versus them or yeah. them being wrong and we being right. Mm -hmm. uh, but rather it's important that we understand within fiqh masala, masail and fiqh issues, ikhtilaf uh, al-ummati rahmatun, the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that uh, the uh, differences of opinions amongst the ummah, this yeah. is a mercy from Allah Almighty. Yeah. So, but we we passed that stage now, yeah. and we're at that stage where it's clear uh, that everyone needs yeah. to stay at home, yeah. everyone needs to self isolate, yeah. and needs to protect themselves, yeah. uh, their family members, uh, their relatives, and the wider community uh, within their localities. Gee, thank you for that. So, Imam, so moving us swiftly on to my next question, you've uh, you probably noticed, you probably heard spoken to people. Everyone's unsettled, anxious. A lot of people are panicking. The videos of shoppers stockpiling, fighting in, uh, you know, shopping stores, they're going viral. As an Imam Saab and Ali Medin yourself, what advice can can would you give to the mass public regarding these times and these tough times that we are facing? I think it's important that we, uh, during these difficult and testing times, uh, do not lose uh, sense of purpose and we do not lose sense of objective uh, as uh, Muslims. Uh, our purpose and objective uh, and our reason for creation has been made clear in yeah. a verse of the Quran that many will be familiar with. Allah Almighty says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ But Allah Almighty says, I did not create jinn or man except to worship me. Yeah. So whatever it is that you're doing, yeah. Uh, be that uh, in the masjid or outside the masjid, yeah. uh, be that at home or be that at work, uh, be that uh, whether you are uh, 
uh, you know, in a in a place where there is a social gathering or whether you are behind closed doors uh, and you are completely cut off from the dunya, mm-hmm. in whatever regard, in whatever situation you are in, uh, our ultimate aim should always be to worship Allah Almighty. Mm-hmm. Now, worship of Allah doesn't just mean fa- five time prayers and and fasting in the month of mm-hmm. Ramadan and zakat and Hajj. These are the external. Uh, mm. pillars of Islam, but worship of Allah Almighty also means uh, that you fulfill the rights of the people. Yes. Uh, like we know uh, that we have hukukullah and hukukul ibad. Yes, yes the yes. rights of Allah and the rights of the people. Yes. Yes. So if you're not fulfilling the rights of the people yes. by being selfish and by being greedy and hoarding uh, food and provisions, uh, then ultimately you're not fulfilling your purpose and objective Mm. Uh, of being on this earth, which is to worship Allah Almighty Jalla mm. wa'ala. So one of the ways uh, the Arifin and the Sufiya mention uh, of attaining mm. uh, ma'rifat and recognition of Allah and worshipping Allah and showing uh, and attaining the mercy uh, and rahmah from Allah Almighty mm. Jalla wa'ala is by showing mercy and rahmah to the creation. Yeah, uh, and by having recognition of the uh, creation of Allah, the makhluk of Allah, yeah. Allah, fulfilling the rights of your parents, of your spouse, of your children, yeah. of your uh, siblings, your family members, your friends, your relatives, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I think it's important that uh, during this period that, number one, we do not lose sight and we do not forget our purpose yeah. and objective in life. Yeah which is ultimately to worship Allah and to recognize Allah Almighty to have irfan and pechan of Allah, number one. Mm. Number two, I think it's important uh, that we are not overly influenced by what we see around us, Uh, be that in terms of the influence of the media, uh, social media, electronic media, uh, be that in terms of influence of uh, the videos that you may mention of, mm. uh, the statuses that we come across, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, as soon as we start to be influenced uh, by the things around us, right. uh, then we forget about the influence that we have within us. Yeah. Uh, that mm. uh, what's going on inside. And uh, yeah. this is why the Prophet Sallallahu so, Alaihi Rabda. Uh, linking the second point with the first one, that whosoever recognizes himself has recognized Allah Almighty, has recognized his Lord. So have recognition of yourself. And this is a great time for us to uh, use this opportunity of self-isolation to find ourselves again. Uh, you know, many of us have been co- have become consumed by materialism uh, and caught up in this uh, capitalist um, uh, mahal and environment that we've all been sucked into. Therefore, we need to take this opportunity uh, to uh, realign ourselves uh, with what is our purpose, our our objective in life. Uh, therefore, take this opportunity to read as much Quran as you can, as well as observing the five daily prayers. Spend time with your family, with your children, try to establish jama'at at home, set targets for your children uh, that they read the Quran, they read the rood and send salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. You do halaka and gatherings of zikr and fikr within your home as well. Yeah. And don't just be overly influenced by external components like the media, like social media, electronic media. Uh, try to spend less time on your phones and more time with your family members and those who are around you and take this time to uh, do muraqaba, muhasaba, mm-hmm. a reflection upon yourselves mm-hmm. and, and really use these 21 days or so, this initial mm-hmm. period of a three-week lockdown and isolation yeah. uh, to re-find ourselves. Yeah. Uh, uh, and when we refine ourselves, then we're able to uh, re- redefine our purpose in life. And then when this situation is over, no, no doubt this time will pass. When this situation is over, uh, mm-hmm. then we are refocused, we are re-energized, yeah. and we know uh, what it is that we need to do in order to fulfill our purpose on this earth. Uh, because do din ki zindagi, na? The reality is that we're here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, So if we're going to spend all this time uh, being influenced by anything and everything other than what is within ourselves, Yes, and a bit of Rumi here without quoting Rumi. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'll quote Rumi. Masnavi Sharif, they say what? That zindagi amad barai bandagi. 
زندگی بے بندگی شرمندگی نا فارسی ہی ہے دس ایز دیٹ دا ہول پرپس اف لائف از دیٹ یو ڈیووٹ یور سیلف ٹو اللہ ان ہز رسول اینڈ وین یو ڈونٹ ڈیووٹ یور سیلف ٹو اللہ ان ہز رسول دین یور لائف ہیز نو پرپس یور لائف از فل اف شیم اینڈ اٹ از شرمندگی اٹ از فل اف شیم اینڈ دیر از نو ریل آبجیکٹو دیر فور یوز دیز ڈیز اینڈ ویکس ہیڈ ان آڈر ٹو فائنڈ یور سیلف ان آڈر ٹو بیٹر یور سیلف ان آڈر ٹو امپروو یور اسٹیٹ where we were using the excuse of work or school mm-hmm. and college and uni uh, for not being able to pray our salah on time. Now we have no excuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we have no excuse uh, to abandon our prayers, to miss our salah, to not establish jamaat within our homes, to not spend time with our children. Mm-hmm. As we were talking about earlier, parents have a huge role mm-hmm. to play in the uh, the future of their child, their children. Uh, therefore, take this opportunity Uh, to uh, read Quran with them, study the deen with them, read stories from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sallam companions Sallam. to your children. There's a lot of online learning and ulama who are doing a lot of work online, be that Dawati Islami, uh, be that uh, Qibla uh, Alama Sheikh uh, Muhammad Aslam Saab from mm. Birmingham, uh, Qibla Mufti Munawar Atik Saab from Birmingham, mm. uh, Maulana Hussain Saab, Maulana Kaleem Saab, Alama mm. uh, from Bolton, uh, Sunni Dawati Islami as mm-hmm. well, you know, mm-hmm. I commit list the Kamar Academy from Bolton who are doing a lot of mm-hmm. work and a lot of things are in the pipeline. So mm-hmm. look for these things. Uh, quite a number of scholars mm-hmm. are doing online uh, sessions in the evenings. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Honorable um, Sheikh Shabir Siyalvi Saab in the evenings. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from that, Imam Asim, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm starting a Darf uh, uh, on Al Adab al Mufrad today as well, inshallah. Uh, therefore, uh, take this opportunity uh, to do good uh, mm-hmm. and to stay away from that which is wrong and fulfill your purpose mm-hmm. and understand your uh, your, your uh, objectives in life, inshallah. No and in regards to the online uh, the, um, talks that you'll be doing, is that on your Facebook page if people want to? That will be on my Facebook, though a yeah. number of people have said that. Uh, they don't have facebook okay. uh if if we do uh, go ahead with it mm-hmm. uh, then inshallah uh, we will um we will uh, mm-hmm. put it on our al hikam media page oh, which okay. is our youtube okay. channel okay. No, no, no. so they can inshallah, inshallah. Uh, like i told you before i'm not technically gifted <laughs> right. and the brother who deals with all of our recordings yeah. uh, obviously uh, there is a, a clear state of panic amongst yeah. um, family members so they can inshallah, inshallah. Uh, inshallah. but uh, certainly on my facebook uh, because we, even if we don't uh, use the camera then we mm. can use my phone so yeah. we we will see Uh, we will see inshallah but no. uh, certainly uh, on my facebook no worries and going off the back of what you said uh, imam sahab uh, here today gone tomorrow obviously we are facing a pandemic and unfortunately the harsh truth is that we are all going to taste death one day or another we don't know who's going to go soon who's going to go later nobody knows but when our time's up our time's up not a second later not a second earlier this time imam sahab is would you would you recommend this time you know to learn in in regards to farz alum ghusl of mayat and things like that is that very important and how important is it to know this particular aspect of the deen because i know whenever a death is happening in a family everyone's all rushed people then realize that oh i should have never learned this but now we've got the time to study such something of this nature not just this but everything else for eyes of namaz etc if you could just mention briefly in regards to that No doubt uh, many of the listeners will be aware of the virtues and excellences mm-hmm. of seeking knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, a famous narration comes to mind where the Prophet Sallallahu said uh, that طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيدَةٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ That the seeking of knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim, every mm-hmm. believer, yes. Yeah. Uh, the right mentioned in mm-hmm. uh, Bayhaqi Sharif. So we have uh, this understanding that we must seek Uh, knowledge in relation yeah. to the basics of our deen yeah. uh, you know wudu and ghusl and tayammum yeah. and tahara and yeah. how to remove najasa how yeah. to uh, you know perform istinja yeah. the etiquettes of going to the toilet yeah. um, you know which all come under kitab al tahara and uh, aside from this how to read our salah the do's yeah. and don'ts what yeah. makes our salah what breaks our salah So again, there are many online classes, uh, mm-hmm. you know, videos that you'll find on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Take this opportunity, uh, set aside uh, 
15 minutes, half an hour, uh, put a timetable in place, uh, and set aside that time in order to seek some knowledge regarding the deen. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, from amongst them, uh, things that we should try to know is how to perform ghusl of a uh, mayyit, of a dead person. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, this is very important, uh, but it is uh, not uh, from amongst the uh, fardain, the faraidul ain, okay. uh, but no doubt is from the uh, fardul kifaya. Okay. Uh, that even if you want to know, that yeah. there is a need for uh, a group of people within the community to know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, I was blessed and fortunate to perform the ghusl of my father mm-hmm. and then to lead his janazah and then also in my own hands to bury him as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not everyone's in that privileged position. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, in order to fulfill the rights of your parents, mm-hmm. certainly as a as a son towards your uh, father and as a daughter towards your mother, yeah. Yeah. then this is some knowledge that you should have. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's one of them things that, a person maybe that person will pass away in five years time ten years yeah. you might learn that knowledge today you might yeah. forget it when the time is needed yeah. uh, but it's, it's there isn't it yeah. uh, practice is uh, is something that uh, yeah. leads to perfection yeah. uh, but certainly I, I would agree, agree with you uh, that there is a need for that type of knowledge yeah. um, as well as what I mentioned yeah. uh, you know and study the seerah the yeah. life of the Prophet Sallallahu his shama'il his in internal and external perfections and beauties mm-hmm. and aside from this uh, you know uh, try to read at least uh, one hadith sharif a day mm-hmm. with its uh, meaning and understanding mm-hmm. and translation uh, mm-hmm. one ayat of the quran one eye of the quran uh, and, and like this build this routine mm-hmm. uh, because we don't know how long this is going to last for mm-hmm. we are already on the road to ramadan uh, yes. with the, obviously uh, rajab al murajab coming mm-hmm. to an end uh, Shaban al-Muazzam just around the corner. I think if he hasn't started, he will in the next day or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Ramadan is, is, is around 30 days away. Yeah. So even though we might not have the uh, the great excitement and uh, atmosphere and environment which is mm-hmm. created in our masajids through the iftar and the taraweeh and the durus and so on mm-hmm. and so forth this year, but certainly we need to begin our preparations if we haven't already. Uh, for no doubt the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this dua that Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shahban wa ballighna Ramadan. Oh Allah bless for us the month of Rajab and Shahban and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. We make the same dua today as well. And Allah Almighty allow us to see the month of Ramadan mm-hmm. even though we are going through a very difficult situation uh, at this moment in time. Uh, but we are optimistic that Allah Almighty will bless us with Mahi Ramadan once Amen. again. Amen. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for that, Imam Saab. And just to conclude uh, this particular show, Imam Saab, um, final question now, inshallah, going for uh, going forward. We've got a lot of uh, messages coming out, a lot of statuses, a lot of people going on. Uh, the, but the message they're trying to give is all year round, we've neglected Allah's house. Now Allah stopped uh, the prayers from taking place in his masjid. Without going into that, what I want to go into, Imam Saab, is if regardless of what we've done in the past, sins, whatever they may be, how can a Muslim come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sinned many times? How do we, how can we go from maybe, you know, uh, from doing a lot of sins to pleasing our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the way, what is the method, what did the ulama say, if you can please shed some light in regards to this? No doubt uh, to, to, to begin the discussion, we have to understand that we should never despair in the mercy of Allah. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not despair in the mercy of Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala. Those who are making such observations yeah. and social media commentators, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, they uh, might not be uh, 100% accurate. Yeah. Uh, they call, uh, we are human beings. Yeah. And as humans, we have a tendency to uh, make mistakes and commit yeah. sins. Apart from the messengers and the prophets of Allah, yeah. who are no doubt ma'asum, uh, they are sinless. They are pure and faultless, uh, and they are a, a personification of perfection. Uh, but aside from the messages and the prophets, each and every human being within the creation of Allah yeah. has the capacity to commit sins. 
And that is human nature. If we want to sin, then Allah will replace us with someone who would sin. Yeah. For indeed, Allah is ghafoor, He is Rahim. Mm-hmm. And in order to uh, uh, do, uh, yani, in order for these attributes of Allah to manifest themselves, mm-hmm. uh, there has to be people on the earth who are seeking forgiveness from mm-hmm. Allah. Yeah. who are seeking, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, making tawbah to Allah Almighty and turning back to Allah. Uh, so we shouldn't despair in the mercy of Allah, even if your sins are as high as the mountains or as vast as the oceans. Yeah. If you turn back to Allah Almighty once in sincerity, yeah. then Allah Almighty no doubt will wipe the slate clean uh, and it's as though you are like a newborn baby. Yeah, sure. Allah loves to forgive. Yeah, sure. Allah loves to uh, pardon His self. Uh, and no doubt it is something that we should inna allaha yuhibbu tawwabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin yeah. like Allah says in the Quran surah number 2 verse 222 that indeed Allah loves those who repent and yeah. Allah loves those who keep themselves clean yeah. and this word tawbah comes from the word tawbah yatubu which means uh, literally means to turn back to Allah Mm-hmm. So this is an opportunity in light of the current situation mm-hmm. uh, that we take this opportunity to turn back to Allah. Minimum we should be doing uh, istighfar uh, 70 to 100 times mm-hmm. a day. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli dhambin wa atubu ilayh. Now when we are saying this, that we place our sins in front of us, yeah. uh, our minor sins uh, yeah. in front of us, and that we ask Allah for forgiveness, like this uh, you know, practical advice for the listeners, that when we finish our salah, our mukammal salah, uh, we recite Ayatul Kursi yeah. and also 33 times Subhanallah, 33 times Alhamdulillah, and 34 times Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. yes? yes. Uh, yeah. And we know uh, from the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that person who does this, or 33 times Allahu Akbar and the 100 Tasbih, uh, La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Uh, the one who does this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even if his sins are are as vast as the foam in the ocean. You know, when the ocean takes tide and the foam that is gathered uh, on the beach, yeah. uh, even if his sins are as vast as the foam in the ocean, yeah. because of the effects of this tasbih after salah, Allah Almighty will forgive his minor sins. Yes? So this is in relation to minor sins. Yeah. So these are habits that we need to develop. Usually yeah. we do salam and that's it. Doro uh, dor nas on to the next place, on to back to work, uh, yeah. back to this and going to the gym and uh, playing football or whatever it is that we yeah. do, sahih. Uh, so this is an opportunity to take that extra minute, uh, extra five minutes, extra ten minutes, uh, do something out of the Quran after every prayer, do tasbihat, tahlilat, uh, and turn back to Allah Almighty Jalla Bahala. And similarly, similarly we have to understand uh, that uh, there are minor sins and there are major sins, major sins as well. And when it yep. comes to major sins, very quickly, the ulama mention uh, that repentance or and seeking tawbah of major sins, uh, you can find in the three R's. Number yep. one, recognition of sin. Acknowledging that you made that mistake. Yep. Uh, uh, number two is remorse yep. and regret. Having remorse and regret and making tawbah to Allah, try to shed tears. If you can't shed tears, then make a face similar to the one who is crying and uh, make uh, uh, forgiveness and seek forgiveness uh, of yeah. your sins from Allah Almighty. Uh, be that you give sadaqah uh, in the way of Allah, this uh, removes uh, 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 the sins from your book of deeds, just mm-hmm. as water extinguishes fire. Uh, and similarly, the third R is resolve. Having that firm resolve and making that uh, firm promise to Allah Almighty that you're not going to commit that sin again. Mm. So these are the three stages of making tawbah of major sins. Mm. And if you've wronged somebody, uh, you've said something against somebody, you've done ghibat against somebody, so on and so forth, then the fourth step to this uh, stage of seeking forgiveness or these um, these steps of making forgiveness of major sins is that you seek forgiveness from that person, that individual as well. Yeah. Yes. So this is an opportunity to seek forgiveness from Allah, to make istighfar, and no doubt the one who makes tawbah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, lahu, The one who repents and turns back to Allah and seeks forgiveness yeah. of his sins is like the one who has not committed a sin in the first place. And Allah Almighty is so merciful 
that when you ask for forgiveness of your sins, and then Allah Almighty will remove any trace and any record of that sin from your book of deeds. Okay. Yes. So, so Allah Almighty will instruct the angels to remove, uh, and there will be no witness to, witnesses to that sin. There will be no uh, uh, no accountability of that sin on the day of Qiyamah. So that, this is why the Prophet so said, so and I end so upon these words, that, Ya ayyuhan nas, tubu ila Allahi qabla an tamut, that, O people, turn back to Allah before death comes to you. So yes? yes Media is telling us to go into uh, quarantine and the end is near and, you know, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But the Quran has told you and me 1400 years ago that the hour is near, huh? yep. uh, that Qiyamah is near, the end of time is near. Uh, and what he do we uh, take and what he do we make of the verses of the Quran? Yes. Iqtarabati sa'atu wan shakal qamar. Mm-hmm. And the hour is near, and the moon has been split into two. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's important that we understand uh, that we uh, seek forgiveness of our sins and take this opportunity uh, to turn back to Allah, uh, to re-find uh, ourselves, to redefine ourselves, to better ourselves and improve our state. And then we make dua for istiqama, uh, and we make dua for steadfastness, and that Allah Almighty uh, keeps us all sincere in our deeds and our Amen. actions. I mean, thank you very much for that, Imam Sab. Thank you for taking some time out. I do know you've recently become a father, um, and I do appreciate you taking uh, this time out to speak to ourselves and speak to the viewers. So, thank you very Allah much. Allah Almighty that. bless you. Forgive me for any shortcomings. Okay. Uh, I do have a tendency of just waffling sometimes. Uh, hopefully, uh, the listeners will find uh, this podcast uh, beneficial. Okay. Allah bless you for. Uh, allowing us uh, to uh, share some words with the listeners mm-hmm. and at the same time uh, hopefully uh, provide some guidance during these difficult and testing times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look forward to our next podcast inshallah. where we are not just doing it over the phone yeah. uh, but we're in the studio inshallah and we have the uh, the company of one another inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that Imam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank mm-hmm. you.